it's always a little bit of a challenging challenge dealing with where the two ends of the coil overlap. You get a bump, and then you have to deal with the thunk. need to add something right here onto this piece to finish throwing with it. So what I'm going to do is make a thick cylinder and I'm going to add it right here. So I need a caliper measurement. I, it doesn't have to be as exacting as a jar measurement. What I do want to make sure is that I have an ish and I want to go right over the center of that pot. Is your thickness okay for that one? So this is pretty thin. It's stiff as hell. So it should hold up. So I can kind of walk around the thickness as a, if I have something that's really, really stiff. So after I caliper this and get an ish that I'm happy with, we'll pass this around and you can feel just how stiff it is. This is a moment when I want that stiff as an mf -er. I'm also gonna add clay, slip and score, attach it, and then throw off it. So it's gonna be a little bit of a different connection than this. So it's actually gonna connect a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go right over the center and I'm gonna kind of choose like a measurement that's like right here. Cause I'm gonna want my cylinder kind of like sneaking over this edge and all the way to over here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So feel how stiff that is and pass it to your neighbor. It's attached to the bat so don't worry about it tipping. So I'm gonna take the wetness off the sides because I'm going to take this right now from here onto there. Okay. I'm going to get the moisture off of the inside and the outside of my walls. I'm going to choose, oh, I need to make that a little more straight up and down. I'm going to collar this in just a little bit because I want this the same width. So that I know the bottom of this is right where I want it to be too. Now it needs to come out just a nudge. Okay, that's better. So I noticed it was flaring out like this. Mm -hmm. If it's wider here and thinner here and I'm only measuring here, I don't know if I have that right measurement of kind of the width of where I want it to be. So I'm making it more straight up and down so that I'm a little bit closer. And again, you have a bit of wiggle room in these methods. It's not as exacting as a jar, which is really nice. So whenever I'm cutting something off the wheel and it's really thick, I'll go in with my wooden rib first. I want to put my inside hand and a knife is great. Your needle tool will work too. And I'm going to go almost all the way through. That went all the way through. My goal is I want this to be enough in the round where I can still work with it, and I think it will be. So I'm going to put that aside, pick this feller up, Lazy scoring. Because what the heck? There's no lazy way to do the cross hatch, though. Well, unless you have like a really good scoring tool with several tines on them. Blythe likes to use corn cob holders. Mm -hmm. Those work well because there's they're like a thicker gauge of a metal material. So they do score as well as a needle tool. If you've ever seen the tools that come on like a needle tool base and they're like thin fan mm -hmm. wires, mm -hmm. those don't work well for me because they're not stiff enough so they don't score very deep. I have the ZM uh, scoring tool that has 
four of those. Yeah. I have one of those too. I like those. So cool. mm -hmm. It's like a corn cob holder, but a little fancier. Mm -hmm. yeah. Probably a little more expensive. Yeah. Yep. I have that one. It's so cool. I think mm -hmm. um, I was in Walmart a little while ago, and like on the end of one of the kitchen aisles, they had some good-looking corn cob holders. Mm -hmm. Forks work sometimes. Something like this, I want something deeper than a fork tine. But often, if I'm coil building, I use a fork because it makes it go quicker. Not a plastic one, a metal one. I use serrated ribs. And serrated ribs, they don't go very deep, but again, like people who are really skilled with hand building, you see all sorts of things. Everybody has their preferences. So it works for Allison, works for Allison. That's good. All right, so I can't, I can't handle this too much. What I am gonna do is just very carefully pick this up and I can pick it up without it deforming right now, straight off the wheel because it is really thick, okay? And I'm dealing with this very gingerly. I do wanna score that bottom a little bit and I'm gonna be more careful to just maybe not throw this out around. This is not leather hard clay, it's super soft clay I just threw. So I don't have to be as aggressive to go deep with that scoring. And for me, I'm always trying to eliminate areas of failure. So like I'm not confident in my scoring techniques and I haven't used that metal serrated rib. So I always kind of overkill the scoring. Allison, you figured out what works for you and boundaries you can push. That works for you. It's really important to kind of develop your own methods. So now I'm going to take this and kind of put it on the edge. I overscored by quite a bit, which I can patch. I didn't really realize I did it that bad. And now I'm going to use the wheel to kind of make sure that this is going to be rather centered. And I'm just going to eyeball it. And I'm going to like keep throwing with this so I don't need it like perfectly centered, centered. I just need it to a point where I can start working that clay together. And I'm gonna center the coil once it's on here. I'm also gonna keep a sharp eye if I think this part is getting soft, right? And I'm gonna be making sure to give that vessel a rest. So I don't need the rest of this moisture on this part, so I'm gonna take it off. I'm going to have to push on this pretty aggressively to kind of get this centered on there. And my hand can fit in this, which is helpful. I really can't do this very well unless my hand can fit right in there. So I'm going to bring that clay just down a little bit. And this is why you need nice setup clay. I'm gonna be kind of working it down towards that connection point, just to make sure that I'm really connected. And then because I started with a centered piece of clay, I'm gonna be able to work with this coil, throw it right off the piece, and get it centered just by lining my hands up, right? My fingers are lined right up on each other. And I have a centered piece of clay that I just got. This is a great moment to make a sponge on a stick so that you don't have to get your hand in there every time you need to get water off the bottom. If you have water on the interior bottom of this vessel, you're going to be in trouble. It's going to make it crack if you leave it down there. So you've got to get it out. So I find a stick. That is as long as I need to get down in the vessel and I'll take my sponge and I'll rubber band it to my vessel or to my stick like this. And that way I can put it in even the most narrow opening. You can see a sponge on a stick on top of the tool shelving over there, you see it? Mm -hmm. But it's this way. <laughs> that does me no good. If I'm using a sponge on a stick, I have something wider than that. 
right? So I recommend just like rigging up your own, hair tie, rubber band, whatever works. So now I can work with this. I'm gonna collar it in first. Just pop my speed up. And this is my favorite method rather than kind of adding a big long neck because it's going to be really tough for me um, to throw like a really tall neck and add it on. Here, I'm going to be able to kind of work with something that's going to be centered and in tune with the vessel that I've made. Mm -mm. I'm going to do that last. You're going to build a thingamabobber? <laughs> I am going to build a thingamabobber. I don't like using the bis bis bisked ones for mm -hmm. one reason. They're never the size that I need. And it doesn't work that well. Leather hard clay sticks awesome to leather hard clay. I'm also going to have to build a sponge on a stick. Got an extra hair tie if you want one. Awesome. I don't think I have a lot of hair ties around. Although my hair's getting to that length again. Mm -hmm. I can't help it. I need a hair tie. I used a paintbrush last sure? night, so I would say I probably didn't have a hair tie on me. So the taller I want something, I'm going to be kind of at a conundrum. If it's really narrow and I want something really tall, I know the last move I'm going to be making is pulling it, right? So to get the height, you got to collar it in, but I can't get my finger all the way down in there, right, anymore. Mm -hmm. So you've got to balance pulling and making your clay thinner, kind of knowing maybe collaring is going to be your last move. I got a lump of something up there. I also know like once this neck gets leather hard, I could trim it, right? Mm -hmm. I know it's thick. You guys get the, the gist. Right? Mm -hmm. So something when you're kind of collaring over and over again is it can add a little bit of motion to the clay, kind of wanting to spin upwards. So whenever I'm doing something like a spout or a neck, I go down a couple times. Don't worry, we'll get her back. Scaring me. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's gonna get thick. I know, it's gonna fly off. Yeah. So I know I have like a pretty thick neck, which is okay. But I want to move down a little bit too. And that's just gonna unwind it. No, oh, it's alright. No, it's gonna scare me. Make sure you have nice moisture on the outside. It's still centered. I was just unwinding it. Right? You're good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why are you the one like? Bro, I'd be stressed. Bro. Bro. <laughs> to be well, I think it's important. Like clay does have some resiliency to it. What happens if I just totally screw this up? You're it, you start again. No big deal. I just smack another on there. I'm good. I just cut it off right down there. Right? Yeah. Hard part's done. I figured out how to do it. Mm -hmm. Right? If I screw this up, I can just cut it off, make sure that's stiff, I'm good to go. Take half the time the second time. Half the time the second time, spoken from experience, right? How yes. good are you at compound forms now? Much better than I used to be. Oh, How much quicker? Super quick. Half the time, yeah. right? All right, you get the gist. So what I want you to have ready for next class are the two ideas that you want to get rolling on. Okay. Do you have questions about what you can make in this assignment? No. Can be functional, can be sculptural, could be wheel, could be hand, could be both. Big, tall, stack, stack, stack. What, what are we looking at there? Explain your sketch to me. So this is the one piece right here. Okay. 
Ah, mm. I see. The exterior pieces are going to attach to the side of that, and then the two. Mm. You have like your parts, and then the center yeah. is the finished. Yeah, love it. That's going to be so yeah. much fun. How big are you thinking? Five seconds. That's great. That's a great idea. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. um, does anybody have questions? Height max. Kiln height is the um, max for this assignment. Okay. So 24 and a half inches high is the max. 25 inches wide is the max. We want to get them through really quickly, so we're going to schedule them in an electric kiln. This kilns and gas take a lot of time, and I know I'm not going to have the ability to like fire off a gas bis kiln for quite some time. So I want to get these out and available to glaze quicker. So we're going to go electric kiln dimension. Oops, I cut my finger. Um, electric kiln dimension is our max. I like that form up there. Is that a picture? Mm -hmm. That's a picture? The one on the very top? The one on the right? On the right, up yeah. Up here? All the way up? Yeah, that's picture? a picture. Mm -hmm. Picture it is. So, before I call this done done, I'm going to have to go back in and get the water out, okay? So I know I have to do a sponge on a stick, and I'm going to kind of make sure this is stable and centered before I call it done. If this is my final shape, I can wire it loose. When you wire something that is leather hard clay, it is going to be tough. It's going to kick back at you, so my advice would be cut in as level as you can down here with a knife. Finish with a wire tool because when you try to wire leather hard clay, that wire is going to pick up. Just like you saw that happen in that one component. Mm -hmm. So wiring leather hard clay is really, really tough. Just know that. Questions? If the bottom is sticking up, yeah. is it a good idea just, just for that sake and like let the water out? Yeah, that would work. Oh, that would work? Okay. But did it go all the way out and then when I turn it back over, is it going to go back down? I'm never sure of that. So I go for a sponge on a stick. If I know I have a small amount of water.